Who and what man is has been buried under the myth of obligation. Arise man and shake off the shackles of duty. Look to who you are. Think of why you are. You are a being conceived in purpose, with purpose. Your purpose is your mission. Throughout time, man has been burdened with duties that conflict with his purpose to fulfill his mission. Freeloaders' rights preempt mankind's mission. With every duty comes costs that must be paid, and no benefit received. People with a social agenda argue they are simply claiming their rights or asking their entitlements to be respected. How did we become responsible for your wants and needs? Where did this duty to you originate? What natural law has made me a resource for you to exploit? There are only two classes of people. Either we are responsible for our choices or someone else is. Freeloaders love freedom when freedom can be had at a discount. The focus of a freeloader is finding new ways to download costs onto society and future generations. The key to understanding freeloaders is to see them as gamblers. Freeloaders delay, procrastinate and put off until tomorrow what needs to be dealt with today. Life is not free. Life is a mission to prove the existence of God. If what we do does not lead towards a proof of God, we are not bearing fruit. Every living person is an employee of God. We all receive compensation and benefits as an employee if we are doing His will. A mission is a business that does the will of God. We all consume things and use things. Do we do this as an employee or competitor of God? All we create and consume has value and this value can be digitalized. The expense of our life has to be reconciled with the benefits we produce from using and consuming the things of God. This is what evangelism is about. To evangelize is to do God's business. This is referred to as building the church. Evangelism is what Jesus was talking about when he declared that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. The life that is an asset to the mission of the church has positive value. This is not earning salvation, it is building up the faith. If we are evangelists, we bear fruit. This fruit is the value we add through our missions. We need to think of earth as a business belonging to God. We as the employees of God working to add value to the operations of God, build up the faithful. The evangelist does not determine his or her own value nor the value of what he contributes. God, through his people, determines the value of our work. This determination of value is in the world called the mechanism of supply and demand. It is better considered to be mission specialization. Our fruits is not just our output, our fruits are our speciality and the thing that defines our mission. If we do what everyone does in the same way everyone does our value may not be less than the value of others, but it is no greater. No individual can give us value apart from our speciality. No expert or official can assign us our place in life, irrespective of our speciality, without being in opposition with God. When assigned a role by an expert or administrator we are given a duty. No job or office comes without obligations attached. But where do officials get the right to assign anyone a duty or obligation? No one has a right to impose duties on another. The power to assign duties to others does not exist outside of the borders of a secular state. A duty is invariably a service owed to the one assigning the duty. This usurps the place of God. It is God who determines missions and therefore the specialization we were designed for. Monarchy and democracy are both designed to centralize power and enshrine inequality through legitimizing the state's right to assign duty to their subjects. We have no duty to anyone other than God. Our purpose in life is to make God known. If we did not have this purpose, what purpose could we have? 
The highest and most perfect of all conceptions is our idea of God. The purpose of evangels is to make God known so others can know the most knowable and the most perfect of all knowable things. Evangels seek Him to be like Him and in doing this they seek to model their life after Him and be the highest and most perfect conception of themselves. They do this with a mission that explores a specialization. An evangel is the workhorse of the faith. Evangels study Jesus to learn how to model Jesus in how they live. This is not a duty it is a desire and part of the process we engage in to know perfection. We want to build the church because in building the church we build up everything we value. To build the church is to build perfection. Either a person wants rights and attempts to impose duties on others to get these rights, or we desire perfection, knowledge of what is knowable, and truth. The desire for rights creates inequality. Invariably someone is burdened with the costs of your rights and the obligation to fulfill the duties created by your entitlements. To have value we must create value. This value has to be attached to something. We call this thing, the church. To have value we must add value to the body of Christ, which is the church. Inevitably the person who wishes to build value must model him or herself after Christ. We cannot build up the church without making God in the image of Christ, more knowable to others. By modeling the life of Christ, we come to know Christ and others come to know Christ through us. Our actions must have value to create value. This is what evangelism is all about. Evangel's mission is to fulfill our purpose and to build the church by adding value to the things of God. Believers are of God and the church is of God. God created life and we add value to life to build the church. To do the work of Christ and build the church we must add value to the things of God. We must specialize to create value because it is only through specialized work that we can add value to the things of God. Christians need a vehicle through which to create value, engage in specialization and build up the faithful. Evangelism is not just an undifferentiated activity. Evangelism is a new business model, which herein is referred to as the Evangelical Business Model, EBM. Evangelism is mentioned three times in the Bible. But in conventional usage an evangelist is someone who preaches the good news. Evangelical is a term that pertains to the gospel writings. But to link the gospels with preaching is misleading. Evangelism as gospel preaching leads many to assume that evangelists are people who do nothing but preach, but preaching is done by preachers. Teaching is done by teachers. Evangelists, evangelize and this is more about application than theory. Dictionaries define evangelist as a person who converts others to the Christian faith, primarily through public preaching. By why ought a preacher in public and a preacher in church have different labless? The problem is, scripture does not say much about evangelism. In Timothy we are told to do the work of an evangelist. This appears to be a general exhortation to all believers. The preceding verses exhorts believers to preach the word, rebuke and reprove. Paul warns his listeners that the time will come when men become desirous to hear new ideas and will seek a different teacher, turning truth into fables. Yet at the end of this instruction, he tells us to do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. There is in these sentences a suggestion that the evangelist must move beyond the ideas to get involved in the real perfecting of the saints. Acts has even less to say about the work of an evangelist than Timothy. The Bible records Paul entering into the house of Philip the evangelist. However, there are references that help us to flesh out this statement. In Acts 6 verses 1 to 7 we are informed that Philip was a deacon. The Bible tells us that Philip was one of the men chosen to take care of the ministrations of the church. Yet, 
We cannot assume there was overlap between deacon, evangelist, and preacher. Each must have their own focus. In Ephesians more detail is added, but even these verses do not answer all our questions. Ephesians 4 verses 11 to 17 And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Five categories of persons are mentioned. Apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers officiate. These are the white-collar workers. But the Bible tells us the five groups are given for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, and for edifying the body of Christ. This work of ministry cannot be fulfilled by words alone. There needs to be people who do the work of missions. Evangelism is more focused on application through ministry than theory. This position is taken not just because of what is said in the Bible, but because of what is not said. The work of pastors, preachers, prophets and teachers do not produce ministries but administrators. Missions create the need for these other groups and for deacons and elders. In this interpretation evangels create the missions that build the churches that produce the positions these other groups fill. Evangels answer the question as to how the body of Christ funds ministry and the activity of preachers, teachers, and others. How does the ground-level work of perfecting the saints take place? The answer is the perfecting work of evangels. If we are to do the work of Christ and build the church, we need to end the dependency the body of Christ has on the world. We need to build a new manifestation of how God works in the world as this old version does not appear to be working. Evangelism is not about preaching it is about building. Words are used by the preferential path is to teach by modeling. Evangelists are specialists, applying the truths of God to the everyday problems we all encounter. Evangelicals preach, but we preach perfection through application. Missions are real-world solutions given to us by God. Indeed, evangelism ought to take place from within the framework of a practical ministry. A ministry is a speciality. It begins with preaching and has teaching, but if it does not lead to real-world change our faith remains superficial. Faith must reach into every facet of normal life. A political jurisdiction is not a physical place, it is an environment, but it is rarely conducive to a life of faith. The role of ministry to be transformative. The political jurisdiction is our target audience. A political jurisdiction has value because it contains assets that belong to God. Evangels add value to these assets to build the body of believers. This is done in a real, concrete, and measurable way. There is a catch. Specialization and the power of ministry to be released cannot be usurped by political agendas. Man, to be man must be a first-order category, not a secondary or less feature. White man is not man, he is a class of man. If our policy and concerns highlight these kinds of intersectional values man is no longer man, but an amalgamation of things that share a secondary quality. In the way that grapes and royal garments are both purple. The rise of man requires the elimination of duty, and the elimination of duty requires we stop assigning rights to ourselves and our political supporters.